Three years ago, I went to a journalism camp at a university. Now, I didn't really know what investigative journalism was, let alone what journalism even was, but I was really interested. Anyways, the first day of this camp, we had a lecture from a former esteemed journalist, and the first words he said, journalism is a dying industry. Then he proceeded to say, if you want a job that's going to raise you money and get you money, this isn't the job for you. As a ninth grader, I wasn't even thinking about what I was going to do in the future, but I was really interested. And thus, my passion for journalism began. Now, as you all may know, it's no secret that the journalism industry is in decline. When was the last time you picked up a paper copy of the newspaper? However, the decline in journalism comes from the decline in revenue. The decline in revenue has come from the accuracy and content and validity in decline. According to an ad, uh, article on The Guardian, approximately, um, approximately newspaper ads online earn a fraction of the amount that um, news ads on newspapers via print earn. Furthermore, from 2014 to, from 2004 to 2014, online earn, ads earned a revenue of $2 billion, but the print revenue lost $30 billion. The quality itself, the accuracy, validity, and content of the news is in decline. And one reason for that is the decline in revenue. Um, the decline in revenue, I believe, comes from the quality and accuracy in decline. In 2007, Sam Zell, a business owner, bought the Orlando Sentinel and the Tribune companies. The Tribune companies consisted of the LA Times, the Chicago Tribune, and the Orlando Sentinel. In the Orlando Sentinel, he gave a speech talking about his journalism and toward journalism uh, attitude. He is a billionaire businessman, so he was really interested in the business side of journalism. He said that he really wanted and attributed the journalism industry so that they would earn mu as much revenue as they could and therefore produce enough revenue to um, have enough money to attribute to the journalists in the room. Then he declared that the attitude towards journalism that he had was to raise enough money so that he could gain the journalists' attention, but also to um, have the journalists uh, talk about the, what the readers wanted to read. Now, I think all of you in the room know what fake news is, right? So I'm going to tell you a quick, brief history of how fake news came to be. In 2016, Donald Trump, Trump ran for president. In this time, BuzzFeed media editor Craig Silverman began to notice a string of news that came from the small town in Velez, Macedonia. And these news articles came in masses, 140 news websites all telling fake news information, all from the same town, and it was circulating on Facebook fast. The point of the Macedonians and the aim of the Macedonians weren't necessarily to, because they were interested in American politics, but rather that they were interested in the money that Facebook advertising was making. But of course, you can tell why this is an issue, because American people were obviously interested in politics. Some of the articles that they were producing were such like, Pope Francis, Francis Shock's World endorses Donald Trump for president, or FBI agent suspected in Il Hillary Clinton's email leaks uh, suspected in murder-suicide. This is originally where fake news stemmed from. In the era today, fake news is so easy to spread because we are so easy, easily looked upon for the information that is given to us, but also when we are shocked or when we are interested in something, we don't think about it before we send it off to someone, like your family, your friends, or colleagues. I'm guilty of that, and I'm sure so are you. 
Furthermore, social media has a lot to do with the spreading of fake news. For example, in Brazil, in October, they had a presidential election recently. During this presidential election, uh, many people on WhatsApp uh, brought, got the message which said 17 and the candidate's number, De Silva. Now, the, in Brazil, the elections occur so that the people can use a voting system electronically so that they can plug in the numbers. So the, in this case, it was 17. But in fact, they quickly realized that the number 17 wasn't actually for De Silva, but it was for right-wing Bolsonaro's party. In fact, De Silva wasn't even running for president. Another factor that we have to consider is that in, even in underdeveloped countries or rural areas, that people might not be uh, well-versed well in social media or fake news, but they are still exposed to technology and social media. For example, two men in Assam, a rural part of India, were killed because there was news circulating on WhatsApp that there were child kidnappers in the town next door. And the people in the town next door were, did not realize that fake news could possibly occur because they had never come across the fact that news could somehow be fake. Therefore, these people believed it. This is dangerous because people can realize that, people don't realize that news can be fake and therefore can spread it, like I said before. Now, fake news is an epidemic that people keep getting trapped into these days. In one of her presidential elections, Hillary Clinton addressed fake news. She said, it's now clear that so-called fake news can have real-world consequences. This isn't about politics or partisanship. Lives are at risk, lives of ordinary people just trying to go about their days, to do their jobs, contribute to their communities. Now, you might be wondering why I'm talking about all of this information to you. Well, as a student and teenager, I want to grow up in a world where I can rely on the news and it continues to thrive as a reliable source. Furthermore, as an aspiring journalist, I want to work in an industry where news is not manipulated nor corrupt. The decline of journalism does not have a definite answer. I mean, if we did, we wouldn't be all sitting here listening to me talk right now. But people are working on it. For example, newspapers have, as I said previously, come up with a solution of charging people so that, for example, having a subscription system or having a contribution system. However, I believe that the journalism industry needs to start changing its ways. And I'm probably not the only person who thinks that. Firstly, the journalism industry has to merge completely with the digital world. In our world today, where news spreads so fast, so quickly, we have to be able to keep up with it. And the journalism industry also has to be able to keep up with it. For example, breaking news. By the time we see breaking news on the next day paper, we've probably already known what, what's happened, what's going on, and so forth. Furthermore, and secondly, the journalism industry has to uh, associate itself with something that journalists often do not like to associate themselves with. Business. Like Sam Zell in 2007, Business is a vital part of journalism today. Although it temporarily declines in the quality of the news, it generates revenue at a low cost production, therefore creating revenue for the people, to, people and journalists to use. Although this is, well, not really an optimal source, it provides for investigative journalism to thrive again and the industry needs to restart that cycle. So firstly, investigative journalism starts where people are interested in investigative journalism because it exposes the truth and tells people the truth. Then, as people decide to read investigative journalism, they decide to endorse in newspapers and pay the newspapers, therefore raising their revenue. As they raise their revenue, the 
um, newsrooms and newspapers get more and more money. And as a result, they can pay their journalists, they can hire more journalists, and most importantly, they can provide journalists and investigative journalists with the necessarily funding, resources, and audience, and so forth. The cycle goes on. As our world today, we also have to consider, of course, that we are also part of it. As a society, we have to be able to support the journalism industry. The so-called real journalism hasn't vanished just yet, but it all depends up to us whether we change and support it or not. The, support, the decline of journalism is growing rapidly. However, we can fix that. If, we all, if all of us take part in it, then we are able to either support or not support journalism. Thus, the decline of journalism may come closer to extinction every day. And if that happens, what are we going to do? Thank you.